Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,336. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file, Excel Magic Trick 1,336 connection only start or the finished file or the zipped folder so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we've got to talk about Power Query importing big data text files. And we need to talk about whether we want to do connection only or dump the data into our data model before building our pivot table. Now let's go look at the text files. Over here in Windows Explorer, there's the folder you should download. And notice, it's from the previous Excel Magic Trick. So you have to go to the previous one and download 1335 text files. And then these are the files. They're all text files with transactional data. And we need to take every one of these text files, stack them up on top of each other into a single proper data set. Now I want to open one of these files, so I'm going to double click. Each one of these files has date, website, product, quantity, revenue, discount, and a few other columns here. But these are tab delimited files. Now because they're text files, it's pretty easy to import and append all these into a single table using Power Query. Now notice that the file size is huge. That's 46 megabytes and so on. We have 7 million transactions in these text files. So this constitutes big data we're trying to import into Excel. Now let's go over to our Excel workbook. In 2016, we go to Data and Get and Transform as Power Query. In Excel 2013 or 10, you actually have to download Power Query and install it as a separate tab. Now we're going to go to New Query from File. And here's this awesome option, From Folder. Now we're going to need to navigate. So I click the Browse. And there is my folder. By pointing Power Query to that folder, it will try to import all files in that folder. Click OK. Click OK. We want to click Edit. This opens up our Power Query Editor. And first, we're going to name this query, All Text Files in Proper Data Set, and Enter. Now, each one of these records here is data about those files. We don't need any of it. Because they're text files, we have this binary column, which we'll combine into a single table in just a moment. But first, the extension column. Just in case we have other file types in the folder by mistake, we're going to use the filter here, text filters equals. And we want to say, please only import files from that folder that have .txt. Click OK. Now the only column we need is content. So right click Content, Remove Other Columns. Now because these are text files, not Excel files with objects, we have a double downward pointing arrow. And when we click this, it will try and combine all of these. Now there's a bunch of steps over here that it did, including Promote Headers. But we got to be careful, because it only promoted the very first set of headers or field names at the top of the first text file. There are, for example, in the website column, further down, there is a record that lists website. And if it has website in this row, it also has the other field names like product and quantity. So we want to make sure and come to this column, click the filter, come down to load more, because we have almost 7 million records we're trying to import, so we cannot see a complete unique list, which, which always is displayed for filters. So I want to click Load More. And sure enough, down below, there is a rogue or a mistake field name. So when I uncheck this, it will filter out all the records that contain website in the website column. Click OK. Now for this particular pivot table, we're only going to need website product and quantity. So before I click on quantity, I'm going to hold the Shift key and click on quantity. Right click, remove other columns. This is important because I don't need all those columns. And this is 7 million records. So why not get rid of them if we're only going to use these in the pivot table? Looks like this got the right data type, text, text. 
and whole number. These are the little icons that show up at the top when it guessed right. You could also change it by coming up to data type. Now we're going to close and load, and I'm going to close and load, close and load too. I want to say only create a connection. This means we can build a pivot table even though the data initially is not stored in this file. I'm going to click Load. Now notice it immediately says connection only. It didn't actually have to try and import it now, but later when we make our pivot table, it will. Now I'm very importantly going to Control S. And now if you notice the file name is connection only, I want to hit the F12 key because we're going to create two different workbooks. This one's going to be called instead of connection only in our save as file name text box, I'm going to call this data model. So now we're going to have two different files. Save. Now I'm going to go look over in Windows Explorer. Notice we have the same exact files, and there's the file size. Now I'm going to come back over here and close the data model, open up connection only. I'm going to click Enable Content, Data, Show Queries. We have a connection only query over here. And now we want to see how to build a pivot table from connection only. I'm going to click in Some Cell. Insert, Pivot Table, or the keyboard Alt and V. And the trick is we want to use an external data source and then choose our connection. There is our query. So I can select that and click Open. Now this is the Create Pivot Table dialog box. And what's going to happen with connection only, I'm going to click OK. And it's going to take a long time, because at this moment, and at any moment that we do something in the pivot table, it's going to have to refresh the data. So I'm going to click OK. And it is going to take a long time, because this is a big data set. You sort of already see the moral of the story. Connection only is good when you have small data sets. But when you have a big data set, the data model is going to turn out to be a lot faster. Now, here's our pivot table field list. And before I even make the pivot table, I'm going to Control S to save. Now I want to go look at Windows Explorer at the file size. And there it is. That is frightening. That's the pivot table cache holding all of that data. Now let's build our pivot table. I'm going to drag product down to rows, website down to columns, quantity down to values. You can see each time it's actually taking its time. Here, watch this. Let's go up to Design, Report Layout, and Show in Tabular. Even that's taken a little while. Right click Number Formatting. I want Number. Use a separator, no decimals. Click OK. Wow, even that's taken a long time. There's our finished report. I'm going to Control S, go look at Windows Explorer. It's still about the same file size. Now let's close this and open up our data model file. Now remember in this data model file, after we enable and show queries, it's connection only. But now I want to dump this into the data model. So I'm going to right click Load 2. And now we open up our Load 2, only create a connection, add this to the data model, and click Load. Now what's happening here is it's loading into a columnar database, which is a very efficient means of storing big data with a small file size. Even though it's taking initially a lot of time to gurgle through those 7 million records, when it gets into the data model, the actual file size and building of pivot tables will be a lot faster. All right, so there is our 7 million records. If we wanted to go to data, data model, and I have Power Pivot so I can go and look. You don't have to have Power Pivot built in to access the data model if you dumped a single table in there. But let's go look. I'm going to click there. And there it is. By the way, we imported this through Power Query. If you tried to delete this, um, it would say you can't. You'd actually have to delete it in Power Query. All right, I'm going to close this. I'm going to click in a single cell. Notice I didn't stay over there in the Power Pivot data model window. I'm going to just build the pivot table right here and access the data model. Insert, Pivot Table, or the keyboard, Alt-N-V. And we're going to 
not use external, but notice by default it senses that we have stuff in the data model, so that button is already selected. Existing sheet, A3, click OK. Now there it is. You can definitely tell that that table is from the data model. That little black line is an icon indicating that that's from the data model. Let's drag product down to rows, website down to columns. You can already see how much faster it is when we drag this down there. Design, report layout, show in tabular, right click, number formatting. You don't want to use format cells. Number formatting adds number formatting to the actual field. And there I'm going to say number, separator, zero decimals, click OK. So obviously, the moral of the story is for big data, we want to dump data into the data model because it has an efficient columnar database that reduces file size and makes our querying and building of pivot tables much quicker. And if we save and go over and look at the file size, that's it, the data model is a little over a megabyte, whereas connection only was 29. Now, connection only is totally cool for small data sets. And one benefit is that you don't have to refresh both the pivot table and the Power Query import. You just refresh the pivot table, and it updates. All right, we'll see you next trick.